Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about changing your mindset. It's all about how you think of services, how you think of your company. And I'm pretty sure some of these things are going to change your mind a little bit. So if you're in business, you're in window cleaning, or you're even just getting into business, make sure to stay tuned, WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com. And you are here. What's up? Uh, If it's your first time here, have a look around. I hope you enjoy it. 250 plus episodes. It's been going on for four, five years weekly. Haven't missed an episode yet. Knock on wood if I had wood. Uh, But uh, have a look around. It's anywhere podcasts are available. And if you really want to see me all um, full of allergies, uh, it's also on YouTube. Uh, But I have more of a face for radio. So uh, definitely do that. Um, And if it's not your first time here and you are a faithful listener, what's going on? Faithful listener, you order all your supplies through me, shameless plug, and you have a subscription to America Window Cleaner Magazine, and you follow me on TikTok, and you comment on things. Like, there are some of you who do all of that, and you are absolutely amazingly epic, and I just want to say genuinely thank you for all of that. And by the way, I am a rep for windowcleaner.com. So if you have supply needs, which you do, I mean, thousands and thousands of people listen to this every single week. And uh, some of you don't order from me. I would love to be able to put your order in. This is not like a ploy. I don't like if you send me an order and it's like 60 bucks, some of you are like, oh, sorry. It's no, no, I want all orders. It takes uh, nothing extra on your part. You just let me know. Shoot me a text at 862-312-2026, windowcleaner.com. Put it all in your cart. Make sure you're logged in. Of course, we are the world's largest window cleaning supply house. We want to be your supply house. I want to be your rep. I want to be your guy. Ooh, long, shameless plug. But anyway, let me know. Be like, Jersey, everything's in my cart, and put it in. And uh, as I always say, again, thousands of you, I think some of you still have not gotten a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you just are like, this is an awesome podcast, it's taught me a lot, get a subscription to American Window Cleaner Magazine because that would be absolutely amazing. I see everybody who gets subscriptions. Every time subscriptions come in, they ding me on my phone. I see it. I see your name and I just want to say thank you. Go to awcmag.com. Uh, get some window cleaning stickers, uh, get um, your uh, posters and everything else that you possibly can with American Window Cleaner Magazine. If you're in the industry, by the way, be in the industry. You know what I'm saying? Like what we do is um, is pretty awesome. I love what we do and I love the culture. Uh, obviously, that's why I own a <laughs> window cleaning magazine uh, and hopefully you... Oh no, a subscription to that. But anyway, okay, shameless plugs done. That's how I make my cheddar uh, support if you would like. I would love it if you did. But today we are talking all about changing your mindset. And I know that there's a lot of you out there who have been doing this for a long time. I get it. I get it. I know you are awesome at what you do. Um, I know you have a successful company. I know you're making great money. You are able to do the things you want to do. I know all of that. All of that. But if I could just play devil's advocate for just just a few, any and all businesses all over could be better. Absolutely could be better. Now, whenever we have a show, which is every Friday, if you are a listener, um, there's a lot of things we talk about that some stuff you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Some stuff you're like, that doesn't make sense. I don't think that's great, you know? But the big thing is, is when you take a piece out of it, it changes the whole idea. Think about your company right now and think about it five years ago if you were in business. If you've been in business for six months, think of your company now versus when you first started. There are so many things so many things that change throughout time, right? Every time that you 
roll over a new idea or a new concept or a new way of thinking it absorbs it's like it's like taking one of you remember those like uh sticky balls that really you throw on stuff and they splat well if you took that and you rolled it down the stairs what would happen every stair it hits it would pick up stuff lint dirt whatever depending on how clean your carpet is i know my carpet's clean but it still pick up stuff right when it gets to the bottom, it has so many more things than when it started at the top. Like that's business mindset. I love business mindset. I love the business side of things. If you watched uh, Steve-O and I do a podcast every other Monday night, if you haven't checked that one out, by the way, uh, it's Monday night, just hang out, just shoot the poo with everybody. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but anyway, um, and uh, Steve-O really likes business uh or, or, or doing the work in his business. And I really like the aspect of business. So he's like, he loves the work. He loves doing it. He loves uh, the feeling and the, all of that on the, on the doing the work. And I love the doing of the business. You could be either way. So some of you may not be into uh, business mindset as much because you just love to clean. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube, comment and tell me which one you are. And by the way, just to jump on, if you haven't followed me on TikTok yet, I know a lot of you probably still aren't on TikTok. TikTok's a pretty phenomenal platform um, for just getting content out there. And there's a lot of stuff that you could talk business and still be halfway funny, or at least I pretend to be. So anyway, um, but uh, on all these platforms, right, what you're doing is you're absorbing little things. If you've listened to the podcast, again, 250 episodes, that's like... 175 hours of content that I put out there just in this one podcast, not to mention all the other lives, not to mention all the other shows, not to mention the other uh, guest spots and other podcast, 175 hours of this single podcast. And if you could somehow take all 175 hours and cram it into your brain, what would end up happening is you would pull something out of it. Now, that's not me being some stuck up, I'm nobody. I'm a guy with a microphone. That's all I am, right? But you would probably pick something up. That's mindset, right? Mindset changes and morphs. A business owner that's been doing it for 30 years is different than the one who did it for one. Just the mindset wise, right? They look way older, right? They have probably heart problems and stress issues. Kidding. Uh, no, but when that is all said and done, they're different because they've absorbed different things. That's kind of where changing your mindset is. I love just thinking about things and putting it out there. And that's what we're talking about today. And I want to convey the main message that this is not a service that we provide in window cleaning. It's not. It's an experience. It's an experience. Now, if you're talking route, route can still be an experience, but I'm talking more about residential to a customer like that. And route, you're a lot of layers below, which you can still give a great experience. Again, just real quick on route. If I'm cleaning windows for somebody and they're not the business owner, I need to be super nice Maybe have some have some fun with them, you know, stay out of their way, but just do a great job and be super polite. That's their experience. They don't care how much the business owner paid. They don't care that the windows got clean. They're not the business owner. They're just a person working there and you made their day something. You still created an experience. But when I'm talking about a residential person, not one person in all of the world, or I should say United States because I don't know uh, laws everywhere else, uh, but not one person in the U.S. has to get a window cleaning. Not once. Not ever. In fact, you could never clean the windows in your house and it would probably be okay. Sure, like eventually you would, um, you know, uh, damage your windows. They'd look like crap. You wouldn't see out of them, sure. But you could clean them yourself, Right. Even if it's a two-story and somebody's like, well, they can't get out there. Right, but they don't have to clean their windows, right? So that instantly kicks us in to a luxury. We are a luxury business. 
right? When you're talking about the water company, right? The water company is not a luxury business if you're on city water, right? Because you need water. Yes, you can find it somewhere else, but it's not a luxury to have water, right? A luxury is to have something that is not a necessity, but a want, not a need, but a want. So if you change the mindset that you are in a luxury business, now all of a sudden you realize you're creating an experience. A luxury business. Think about anything that's super epic, super pristine, super. People buy a Rolex. People buy a Rolex, right? They don't buy a Rolex because it, you know, tells time better than an, an Apple Watch. They don't buy a Rolex because of, you know, uh, it tells more specific time than anything else. This watch that I have on my, my wrist is a literal computer. It's a literal computer that I'm muting right now because it keeps dinging. <laughs> but it's a computer. I could do apps and it tests my blood. And this watch that I have on my wrist right now, an Apple watch, is more advanced than any mechanical winded, self-winding, automatic, battery-driven watch out there. But what is this? 300 bucks? What's a Rolex? You can't buy a Rolex. You can't get a, 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 a bracelet. That's like the band. You can't get a band for a Rolex for the price that I get this entire computer on my wrist. So people who buy Rolex are not buying it because of value. They're buying it because of the luxury, of the experience of having a Rolex. So when you go into Rolex, when you are Rolex, when you are anything, they sell an experience of Rolex. They sell a luxury item. So everything that they do from uh, advertising, marketing, uh, branding, uh, everything is on another level. It's Rolex, right? It's interesting. If you ever see where Rolex advertises, they sponsor things. PGA Tour, I don't know if they still are. Formula One Racing. They sponsor where their intended customer is. Rolex does not advertise to, you know, um, uh, you know, dirt track or something, right? They usually don't advertise to something that their target market is not at. And I'm not saying that somebody who watches dirt track doesn't own a Rolex because I like dirt track. I think it's pretty cool. If you don't know, it's just type of racing in the mud, basically. But what they do is they focus on their target market. Their target market is only found because they understand what they are. You need to understand who you are. And you're providing an experience. If you, ex if you provide an amazing experience, instead of thinking about it as providing a super clean window, now people are talking about you. Now people are hiring you. That's so easy. Think about any time that you've ever gotten a review. Ever. Right? Most times they're like, oh, my windows look great. That's all they say. And then they go in to depth on, oh, uh, Jersey was just such a great guy to deal with. They were so nice. They put booties on. They were just blah, 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 blah. They were so kind. Oh, I, took, I saw pictures of, that's what they talk about is the experience they had. And they just mention, oh yeah, I got clean windows too. Sell, think, and live that you have an experience, not a service. And feelings sell. Feelings sell. If you're comfortable with somebody, a transaction happens. If you get a connection with somebody, a sale happens. If you have somebody right now in your life that you are friends with, your best friend, what does he do? 
HVAC? What is he, a plumber? If they are, whatever they do, and you can buy that service, you'll never buy from somebody else. You'll never go to, you know, John's Plumbing when your best friend's a plumber. You wouldn't. You'd always hire your best friend. Why? Not because of the price. Not because of anything. It's because you have a connection with that person. Feelings sell. If you can make somebody feel comfortable, they will buy your service. They will love your company. If you give them great feelings and provide them with the experience. People are too worried about um, not selling on feelings, but always trying to be the cheapest, right? Uh, that's what it is. You know, it's, it's the product I have. They're buying everybody else because they're cheaper. Like I'm not the cheapest in town. Everybody I've ever met ever in 16 years of doing this told me I'm not the cheapest. But yet all of you have work. It's not price. It's not price. If it is price, that's the only thing they can tell. We've talked about this a bunch. But if you don't tell me anything about what you're selling, and all you tell me is the price, I'm going to only be able to go off the price. Right? If I tell you, I need you to hire company A or company B. I wear blue clothing with blue truck wraps and blue this, and this guy wears all red stuff, which one would you hire? If that's the only thing you know, the only thing you can pick is on color. Same thing with price. If I don't tell you the value or the reason you want to choose me or the what I provide or my unique selling point or any of that stuff, the only thing they can tell between you and the guy next to you is price. There's always somebody cheaper. If you lose somebody because of price, it's because you didn't convey the value. And I've lost people to price. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. That will happen. It always will happen. But you can change how many people are doing that by explaining your value. Value, be, be, value beats price. Every time. Value beats price. I guarantee value beats price. Because if two, ten, say ten of you are standing in a line, all window cleaners, guess what? All of you clean a window. My assumption is that all of you make a clean window. And if you if you clean a window better than the other guy, you're talking such a minute, minuscule, you're looking at the glass, I get all the little things. Nobody else is noticing the other stuff. You guys are selling on something that has nothing to do with anybody and no one cares about that. The value is what makes people buy. I want to give you an example. I've said this a bunch, but uh, Michael Geller, guy in the industry, used to be a magician. He told me something one time that really stuck with me. And uh, he was talking to another magician buddy when he was doing this. And he goes, how do I get people to buy me? Like, coupons? Like, what do you do? He goes, no, no, no coupons. Then all you're doing is competing on price. He said, are you cheapest? No, of course. No one's cheapest, right? He said, I don't want to be the cheapest. No one does. So what you do is you be Michael Geller. You be you. You be you and no one else can be you. So if somebody wants you, they have to pay what you're charging. Now, to kind of convey that into making more sense is if there's 10 of you sitting in a row, right? 10 of you in a row, all of you, I didn't even ask price. I assume all of you do windows. If we go to the first guy and the first guy, well, why would I choose you? Well, you know, we're, uh, yeah, yeah, we're uh, cheapest in town. We're cheapest in town. Okay. Why would I choose you? Next guy. Well, I'm really, really nice. You know, people always hire me because I'm so nice. Okay. How about guy number three? Well, to start, we have a seven-day rain guarantee. We guarantee against Mother Nature. We have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. You don't pay a dime until you're absolutely satisfied. We're fully insured. We carry a $5 million aggregate policy. We have all of our techs uh, are um, certified with our training program, and you can see it right there on their badges. You can see all of them. You know who they are because all of our logoed, lettered uniforms, everyone comes in uniform. 
Our trucks are absolutely state of the art. Our equipment is rivaled by none. We take pride in having the best equipment and the smartest and most trained techs on the planet. With all that being said, we also have 1,000 five-star reviews on Google. This is what we do. This is our passion. We live to make you happy. Right? You could go on and on and on. Go to the next guy. What's the next guy got? Um, we, I work with my dad. Okay, so you go down the road and that one person stood out and you're like, it would be ridiculous for me to not buy that guy. It would be ridiculous for me to not choose that one. That one... There, you get so much for it. Do you hear that guy? It's value. He brings so much value to the table over these other guys who are just on price. Right? No one cares if you're the nicest guy. In the, you think they do. But if you're not the nicest guy and they're not dealing with you, they're going to deal with your operations officer or your crew chief or whatever. They're going to deal with somebody else and they're going to be really nice. They want a connection They don't want necessarily a connection with you. It doesn't have to be you. The mindset that you're trapped in your business because they will only deal with you is not right. It's not right. They want the experience. They want the feelings of comfort. Feelings sell. Value always beats price. It's another bit of your job to make sure that they book. It's your job to make sure that their windows are getting cleaned when they're supposed to be getting cleaned. It is not the customer's job to remember to call you. People have the mindset that, well, I don't want to bug them. You're not bugging them. This is a luxury. They want this experience. They want this. It's your job to think window cleaning because it's their job to think of everything else in their life. So when people are almost scared to do a dentist close, to, um, by the way, dentist close... You go to the dentist, you don't leave the dentist without having a next appointment set. That's how window cleaning is. But at the very end, you ask them, do this for a week. Ask them at the end. And by the way, I've gotten dozens of texts, emails, and everything saying people have just started doing this close and it's phenomenal. I've not had one person say they didn't like it yet. But uh, you just, at the very end, you say, okay, Mrs. Jones, thanks for everything. I just wanted to see if you want us to be back in three months, which would put you in uh, around the second week of June. Or if you need it in six months, which would be uh, October uh, 5th. Book it right away. It's your job to make sure that happens. Calls, right? Emails, postcards, everything you can do to remind them you exist. It's your job. Because if it's not, if you don't, if you're not the one who reminds them, they're going to A, forget. Two years later, they're going to call a window cleaner and you are not going to be relevant. They may or may not even remember you. Hey, who was that guy? We had a really good, yeah, I really liked him. What was it? What what was his logo? Like a, like a squeegee or like a, what was that? Maybe that was this one. This one looks, they're not going to remember you. You failed that customer. You provided them a great experience. They were extremely happy. Have you ever been gotten done with somebody? And then like, this is stupid. Oh man, I'm so bummed I got the No. Every the thousands, thousands of window cleaning jobs I've done over the years, not once, not once, has anybody been upset when we were done? Like, oh, all right, well, I'm just bummed I had to do my No. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, this is great. This is so nice. This is so You're making people happy. Why would you not help them to remember that? It's your job to remind them. Don't leave it on them. Do your call lists, spring and fall. Emails, stay with them. Don't do a newsletter, kind of, not really a newsletter. People don't want to read about like industry news. They they want the experience, right? Let them know the other services you offer let them get booked if they didn't get booked follow up so that they will book this is not only building your business into this giant amazing thing but it's helping them stay happy it's helping them have a great experience 
regular. Right? No one's mad. No one is ever mad at you for being like, hey, I'm just checking in with you. I didn't see on the schedule. I would love to give you this great experience. We, I love, remember how happy you were? I would love to make you happy again. When can we get you in? Nobody's like, you're bugging me. What? Then the experience wasn't good. Right? Growth isn't just size. As you build a business, we always talk about growth. Um, gross numbers are for everybody else, right? Everybody and their mother wants to have 10 trucks and a million dollars. They want to have that. They want to have that sexy number just for their own personal little, I can say that I did this. Awesome. But growth doesn't have to be that. I know guys right now who are not even focused on overall growth. They're focused on profitability. They're pro, pro they're focused on profits. Profits are for them. If your company, you pay yourself, you pay your employees, you do all that, and you profit, meaning after everything, fifty thousand dollars. I know companies who are doing a million dollars that are profiting about fifty thousand dollars. I know companies who are doing $100,000 profiting $50,000. Now, if you have any idea about being big, the amount of headaches you have to go through at a million dollar company is absurd. I like to be a big company. I like the hustle, the panic, the flow. I like that. That was my goal. That was the way I wanted to go. But Growth just isn't size. It's also strength. I could be a million dollar company profiting hundreds of thousands of dollars if I did it right. Now it makes more sense. But I would rather be a hundred thousand dollar company profiting 50,000 than a million dollar company profiting 50,000. See what I'm saying? Strength in a company is just as important as growth in just size. In just size... There's a lot of things that come with that. If you do that wrong, if you do that sloppily, if you don't do that with profit and strength in your head, you're doing it wrong. I know guys who are doing millions of dollars a year and their operations are absolutely shams. This isn't, you know, I'm not, I don't, the people I'm thinking of, or the guy that I'm thinking of in specific, uh, is not even in our industry. So he's not watching. If it's you and I talk to you all the time and you're doing a few million dollars a year, I'm not talking about you. But what I am talking about is people who have giant organizations that are running a dozen trucks, 30 guys, and their entire operation is just bleeding bleeding they're getting close to missing payroll right all that stuff that's not a strong company i could care less that it's big i could care less that it's big strength in a company is more important more valuable to a your mindset to your company to like truly what matters than just growth if you're gonna be big that's fine but be big smart be big the right way. Remember the strength of your company throughout the entire journey. The entire journey. Change your mindset in your business. It doesn't have to match my mindset. But think about what you're thinking now and just tailor it in. Everybody thinks right now, before this episode maybe, you never once think you're wrong. Because if you thought you were wrong, you'd be doing it the way that you thought was right. Right? Everybody's right. No matter which way you do it is right. But if you change the mindset and all of a sudden you're like, hmm, I realize I'm not really right. Right? So change your mindset. Change what you're thinking, how you're doing, how you're acting. Change all of that. It's worth thinking about. Either way, shameless plug coming at you one more time. If you get any value out of any of this stuff and you want to help me out, uh, people ask me literally weekly about like Patreons and sending me stuff and PayPal. Don't do that. 
I don't need any of that stuff. If you ever want to support uh, me, support my family, any of that stuff, it is buying your supplies through me and American Window Cleaner Magazine. AWCMAG.com. My cell is 862-312-2026. Let me put your orders in. doesn't cost you any extra. I make it really, really easy. And I get credit. I get cheddar off of your sale. It doesn't cost you anything. It doesn't cost you anything, but I make money instead of uh, you just going to your website. It's worth it. I get people all the time too. All night. It'll be like two in the morning because we're in different time zones. Somebody will be like, hey, my card is good. As soon as I'm up and in front of my phone, stuff gets run. Over the weekends, people do that too. Over the weekends, I'm up in the mountains. I don't get anything. We don't ship, obviously, Saturday and Sunday. Everything ships out Monday. But I get the orders in. I just love doing that for people. That's literally how I make my money. So please, please, please let me put your orders in. Shameless plug over. Um, and either way, with, with all of your mindset, think about how you think. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't have to change. Not that you're wrong. Not that what you're doing is wrong, but just think about what you think and see if there's not something on the outside maybe that you want to change. Either way, definitely appreciate it. Go out, change your mindset, but more importantly, go out there and be epic.